I mean, where do I even begin with this journey, Joe? Because it sounds like it's been a pretty wild one for you. Um, I guess my first question is just, you're two weeks into the season. Uh, you can kind of say, I guess, the, the, the nerves have kind of gone through and you've been able to soak in your first two home games here playing pro football. I mean, what's the past uh, few weeks been like for you, whether it was the training camp leading up to it and then now the two games that you've played? Uh, these last two weeks have been learning and absorbing. So this is totally new to me, football. And I'm the type that I'm always up for a new challenge and I love chasing goals. So the day I made this my goal, I said, all right, I'm gonna commit myself to this and I'm gonna be the best version of myself at this that I can be. And so it's just been a lot of learning and reflecting and absorbing. And I guess let's let's talk about kind of let's take it from your decision to <laughs> come out here and play pro football um, from what I understand you've never kicked a football in your life before this moment mm -hmm. so I was playing soccer with my brother and we were hitting shots together and he looked at me and said Joe you should try to walk on to the Eagles and I'm the type of person that's like you know what yeah I should walk on to the Eagles why not so that night I went on Amazon I bought three footballs a tee and a stand and I started training and I started training hard I didn't know what I was training for. I didn't know how I was going to get on the Eagles, but I was training. And um, within a few weeks, like words going around my family, I'm hitting some bombs, I'm hitting some far kicks. And so my brother ends up talking to what we didn't know was one of the sponsors here. And he told my brother, well, if he's kicking footballs, he should try out for the new Stampede team. There's a pro team coming to Harrisburg. My brother's like, oh. I, we didn't hear about it. So he was like, you know what, that's interesting. If you can get us connected with him, do that and we'll get in touch. So my brother gave me my friend's information, Sean, and Sean reached out to Jay, who's the owner of the team, and he said, all right, come out to tryouts. So I went to tryouts and it just all worked so perfectly. It started with just an idea and then this just kind of fell into my lap. And talking with Justin, um, I mean, it wasn't a role that was just handed to you. You were competing with guys that had football experience yeah. and guys that have been kicking a football and have been uh, uh, intending to play pro football, mm -hmm. um, you know, probably long before you even thought or was asked that question, play for the Eagles. For sure. Um, I mean, just take me through what it was like to compete against guys. What was your mindset going into that tryout? and going into this thing. Because it's what's interesting to me is like, it sounds like for a lot of people, like I have a brother, they ask me, oh yeah, oh yeah, but try out for the Eagles. You should be the kid for the Eagles. I'd be like, ah, you're, yeah. you're, you're pulling my leg. I mean, what are, you, what are you talking about? For you, it sounded like, okay, like, fine, I'll do it. Just explain to me that thought process yeah. and then kind of like actually having to go up against guys that are experienced in kicking footballs. So my family is very interesting. We're very, very close and supportive of each other. So I have an incredible support system. My brother wouldn't tell me that if he didn't think that I could do it. And in regards to the next question, I've never doubted myself. And so when I put my mind to something, it's been like that my whole life. I will work my absolute hardest. If I'm out at the field 12, 15 hours a day, I'll do it just to get where I need to get. So. I found out I was up against kickers that had played arena football, that had played pro, or that had played in the past at a high level, but it didn't phase me. So I've always believed in myself. I just knew that if I trusted God and I trusted myself, that I would be fine. It would work out, and it did. <laughs> and I guess let's talk about kind of the mechanics and nitty gritty of it. What would you say is the biggest difference between kicking a football and kicking a soccer ball? So a soccer ball, there you're rarely ever kicking a soccer ball straight, but with a soccer ball, you can truly learn technique on how to kick an object. So I'm kicking the football the same way I would kick a soccer ball, but now I'm just aiming it straight. So it's a little bit different. There's a lot of like fine stuff that I had to learn, and I had to kind of create a hybrid version of what kickers do and what soccer players do, what I was comfortable with. So I had to kind of find a happy medium and I'm still finding that, but we're making progress. And what was what was the first moment like? Um, and we'll, we'll get to the actual games in themselves. I'm sure it's a completely different atmosphere, but when you bought yourself your tee 
your football um, and you kicked the football for the first time. I mean, what was that feeling like? Was it strange? How did it feel? Because an athlete, I mean, when you kick something mm -hmm. or you do a, a, a skill over and over and over again like you were growing up, which I'm sure kicking a soccer ball is just second nature for mm -hmm. you. When you first bought that football and you kicked that football and it was off of a tee, um, what was that feeling like? Did it feel odd? What was kind of going through your mind with that? It was like weirdly familiar. So I knew right away when I kicked it that I had it and that I had something special and that I just needed to run with it. But it was, it was different, but oddly familiar to me because of my soccer experience, I would say. Now take me through kind of your soccer background. So obviously, when did you first start playing soccer? So the day I was born, my first gift from my father was a soccer ball. Uh, there's a picture of me one day old with a soccer ball at my feet. Uh, when I was four, my dad got me into rec soccer. And from then on out, up until I graduated college, I played every year. So upwards of like a decade, over a decade, about 16, 17 years. And um, so it's been my entire life. So I grew up playing in the club system and then the academy system. I actually played with Christian Pulisic, oh, wow. which most people, everyone knows, Christian's the man. So we played club ball together. I played under his dad, was our coach. And um, went on to play in high school and then play Division I soccer. My first two years at Ryder University, we won our conference championship. So I got a chance to play in the NCAAs. And then we went, we transferred to East Stroudsburg. And I finished my last two years of college soccer there where we won a championship. And I've, I got a few honors, like uh, all-region team, uh, third-team All-American, all-decade team for East Stroudsburg, and team MVP. So from there, I decided to continue and try to play professionally. So I went over to Belarus, and I played on FC Gomel for uh, half of a season, but it got cut short because of COVID. So I came back, and as soon as I got back, I continued to play, but Sorry, I lost my train of thought. So I get back from Belarus, and right away I got into coaching. And so I started coaching the Kingsburg High School team and some club teams on Eagle FC. And a few years later, my brother tells me that I should kick for the Eagles. So I started training, and then now I'm here in the Harrisburg Stampede, which I wouldn't want to be anywhere else right now. And I'm sure, again, you kind of mentioned your goal as becoming a professional soccer player. Uh, I mean, it's no easy task. Uh, I know what the, the grind of the soccer world is like. I've had friends and had uh, you know acquaintances that have gone through that academy system and tried to make that jump to that professional level. It's I mean just mm -hmm. like any sport, it's a difficult one to make. And mm -hmm. I'm sure as a as a kid, your your eyes and it sounds like your mindset was locked in on getting achieving that dream. Different unforeseen paths, COVID, other things kind of get in the way. Um, but to see yourself now, how strange is it that you're oddly achieving that dream? but it's in a completely different sport. It's just the other kind of football. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I'm not surprised. I've always been a risk taker. So this is like, my family would say the same thing. We're not surprised that Joe's doing this because I've just, I've always, if I see a door open, I'll take it and I'll go for it. So that's just always been me. Yeah. Does it fulfill that kind of side of you, that, that, that kind of side where you're like, you know what, I'm just gonna play professional soccer it's not soccer, but it's professional. And I mean, to play professional sports at any level, I mean, it's, it's, it's something really, really cool to look back on. Yeah. Um, does it fulfill that kind of goal that you had? I would say so. I mean, I would have kept trying until I made it pro in soccer. So this just came first and I'm in love with it. I love doing this now and now I want to continue doing it and I want to be the best. So it is, it is a shock to see myself here now. And it is definitely fulfilling, but now I'm looking at, you know, I want to get a championship for this team. That's my next goal. And then, you know, see where it takes me. What, uh, I mean, this might be a loaded question, but if you were to, you know, look back and tell your, you know, five, six, seven, or that, that one-year-old that had the soccer ball in his hands that, you know, was dreaming nothing but playing professional soccer, um, if you told your younger self that you'd be a pro football kicker, for football, not soccer, football, Yeah. Um, at least American football. I mean, what, what would your younger self be telling you right now if that was the case when you look back on it? He would probably be happy 
But um, you probably look at me like this, like really? <laughs> but because of soccer, I was able to do this. So if I could tell myself, I'd be like, I wouldn't even tell myself. I would say, just keep playing soccer and keep your eyes open for opportunities. And, you know, like I said, I had a great support system. So my family has always helped me. Yeah. And, I mean, talk about, I guess, then, um, in terms of actually playing that, and you've played in your two games. Um, I heard you kicked your first field goal. What was that moment like? How has that moment been like suiting up for a professional team coming out here, uh, stepping onto the football field? I'm sure it's a different feeling. Definitely. Um, in soccer, you know, you, you, a kicker in football, it's a different beast. I mean, all eyes are on you. Yeah. Um, you know, they're watching you, you know, kick to, to get those important points through the post. Um, what was that feeling like when you trotted out there, whether it's PAT or whether it was your first field goal this past Saturday? Um, take me through kind of what that emotion was like. So I kind of blacked out during that field goal. <laughs> <laughs> I just knew I had to get it done, and I went and got it done. But coming out to the field for the first time, and then last week, it's, it feels the same as when I would step out on a soccer field in front of people. And it's the same thing as like going up and taking a penalty kick. You know, you have those eyes on you, but obviously there's a mountain of different things that I had to learn. So in these months of training, I didn't experience what I experienced in that game. And so I saw a new set of things that I needed to learn and I needed to diagnose and figure out why this happened and why that happened. So it was just things I wasn't expecting to learn and that I needed to learn. And other than that, I felt, I felt comfortable. And this team, they're amazing. The culture is amazing. The coaches are amazing. The guys are amazing. You know, going into football, I didn't know what to expect because I've always played soccer. I've had a few guys that were my friends that played football, but I didn't know what it'd be like to get thrown into a team, especially a professional team. But these guys are so supportive and loving and they're freaking animals. Like they're amazing football players and I'm so grateful to be a part of this team. As my first football experience, I feel lucky and I feel blessed. Well, I mean, take me through that then. I mean, I see you kind of walking around with your players. I saw the handshake that you had with, uh, with your, your holder there, yeah. Um, I mean, I see you having the conversations with the coaches. I mean, just talk about that welcoming experience and them understanding the odd situation you find yourself in and how they've been a huge part in making you feel comfortable and then the next step kind of making you better and helping you learn and just kind of really molding you into a football player now. I think a positive atmosphere is very important when it comes to learning. and. It's been like a family here. These guys, in such a short amount of time, we've become so close, and it feels like we're brothers. It really does feel like a family. And um, I remember talking to some friends about, you know, playing on this team now, and like, oh, you're the kicker though, I know you get ragged on, like I know the guys bust on you, and I'm like, no, not at all. Like, they're really supportive and positive and happy, and it's a, a great group of genuine, like down to earth and surprisingly humble guys. So, it, I mean, I, I couldn't be more happy to be in their presence for sure. And before we get into kind of some interesting kicker questions, because I know there's always some things that I like to ask uh, mm -hmm. when it comes to rituals and things like that, because I know it can yeah. be an interesting one. Um, in terms of, you kind of mentioned it, the opportunities that soccer has given you. Um, through your career, through your kind of life so far, whether that was traveling the world, getting to play in Belarus, um, getting to play at a high level in college, experiencing kind of winning ways, and then it taking you full circle and kind of bringing you back here and, and again, putting you in the seat of, of a pro football kind of player's life. Um, just explain to me how, how important soccer has been for you in providing you those opportunities and how that sport you might not be playing it right now, um, at least on a professional level, but that it's always going to have a special place in your heart. Soccer, of course, will always have a special place in my, in my heart because I've learned so much from playing soccer, from being a part of a team, from meeting 
certain coaches, from playing with certain players. There's so much that you learn from being on a team and from playing soccer that translates directly to real life. So I'm happy that soccer has given me that opportunity, but it's, I mean, it is my life. Soccer has been my life and it still is, it still is. Uh, two uh, games though into your professional football career. I'm probably going to assume that this is the, the answer that football hasn't yet surpassed your passion for, for soccer yet. But hmm. how much closer has football kind of made ground in terms of being that next kind of ultimate sport for you in just the past few <laughs> weeks um, for you as a, as a football player? Well, right now, it's football. It's the only thing I can think about right now, and I'm obsessing over it. And, and right now, my passion is in football, what I'm doing right now at this moment. And, you know, when the season's over, I... I'm assuming I'm still gonna be in football mode and I'm gonna be training for my next goal. So like right now, and I don't know, for the foreseeable future, my passion and my full focus and motivation is in football. What is your next goal? My next goal will be to move to the, either the UFL or the CFL or the NFL. But, no, my next goal is to win a championship with this team. But in terms of, you know, I understand, like long-term pass, so you're, you're on the path, it sounds like, that you really have picked up this football thing and you mm -hmm. want to give this professional football thing a real go. Yeah, so my, my short-term goal, my first goal would be to win a championship with this team. And then my long-term goal would be to move to a higher level, like the CFL or the UFL or the NFL. Would you ever thought in a million years that you'd be a pro football player? No. No. Not until the day it popped into my head and I said, you know what, yeah, I can do it. And that day forward, I never had a doubt in myself. But before that, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have said yeah. And then I guess now to get into kind of the fun kicking questions, because mm -hmm. I know it's interesting. Uh, I know that cleats are always a special yep. thing when it comes to soccer players. Um, mm -hmm. I'm a rugby player myself and it's kind of that same kind of uh, ideology behind that. It's important. Mm -hmm. uh, what do you uh, prefer? to kick a, a football with? And is it the same kind of what you've been using for soccer? Yeah, so I had to go with soccer cleats when I was training. It was always soccer cleats because I mean, I'm most comfortable kicking a ball with soccer cleats. And um, when we moved to this surface, you know, you had to get either flat or turfs. And so I bought, so my soccer shoes here have a cover over the laces. So then the laces don't interfere with my kick, and that's how I'd like my soccer cleats. And so I got the same thing, but for turf, turf shoes. But they're soccer branded for sure. Yeah, I guess that's your little way of bringing soccer into the into the football world. Oh yeah, huh? yep, for sure. <laughs> and then uh, in terms of rituals, um, I know that you know you probably had your kind of go-to stuff when you were kicking penalties. And let me ask you, what position did you play in soccer? I was a center mid. Your center mid, okay. Center mid, yeah. Um, I'm sure then you had your fair share of kicking penalty kicks oh, uh, yeah. for yourself. Then, um, is that ritual the same as when you were kicking those penalties when you kick a field goal here? Um, and let me tell me what that ritual is. The penalty kick ritual, or for here? Is so, it always? Oh, is it different? So it is different. Okay. So for. The PK, I didn't really have a ritual for PKs, but for soccer, I would pray before every game, before I'd step on the field, and that would kind of put me in my zone. Um, but for football, I make sure that I say a little prayer before every kick, every field goal. But before the game, I meditate a little bit, and I listen to a few songs that I have on my list that I listen to before every game, and then I'm ready to go. Make sure I say my prayer to God, and then I'm ready. What's uh, the ritual I know there? So are you three steps back, two steps to the side? What's, uh, what's your kind of uh, thing when it comes to kicking the football? So I'll go two steps back, full steps back, and then two steps to the left, making sure to touch my feet in between each step. Is that uh, similar to what you did for PKs, or what was the, the steppage like for PKs? It's different for soccer. You just kind of move to the spot. It's not as mechanical as football would be football to get data you have to be precise and exact whereas soccer it's just like a feeling it out thing and I found that in football it's better to be more mechanical and precise rather than that soccer side of it over the past two weeks of games uh, and I guess the training camp that you went through what is the biggest thing that you've learned 
on the football field, whether it's related to the game or just overall, what has pro football taught you here early on in your career? Pro football, so far, like in game, something I've learned in game or something I've learned in general about football? Either or, or both, or both. So in game, the best, the most important thing I've learned is that you can't think about the players that are running to block the ball. And you can't even acknowledge them. You have to keep your complete focus on your task, which is to get the ball in the uprights. You look at somebody, it'll throw you off because your head needs to stay down. And so if you look like this, that can change the tra trajectory of the ball. So that's been the most important for me. It's not acknowledging anything but the task at hand. That's definitely been big for me. But in terms of football, you have to play with heart. Like our coach says, you got to play with heart. The biggest shock, the thing that you did not expect when you put on the pads, what was something that just you thought you maybe knew going into this, but you had no idea? <laughs> I didn't think the helmet would make that much of a difference. But the helmet, you know, moving your head and the helmet shifting can affect the way the ball moves. And it's something that obviously you don't do in soccer, you don't have a helmet on. So getting used to that was interesting. So then a couple follow-ups to that. Uh, that was going to actually lead to my next question was, how different is it now that you have to wear pads? Obviously soccer, not wearing pads, but here you're coming out, got to suit it up. How does that affect you? How has that been getting adjusted to? What's that been like? So it's about... 20 to 30, 20 to 25 pounds of extra weight on you. I might be wrong, don't quote me on that. But it's different because you're not used to running with that much weight. And me, my whole life, I haven't been used to it. Where these guys are used to it because they do it all the time. Where I had to, you know, kind of speed that process along. I was walking around my house in pads and a helmet. I was, every time I train, I was with a helmet and pads to the point where I was doing everyday activities with it on just to get used to it, just looking around my house and just trying to get acclimated. Um, and then I guess then the next question is, uh, is there a different feeling that, I mean, before uh, it was just, you know, guys could slide tackle at you, guys could kind of, but now they can pull and hit you if they get the opportunity to do that. Mm -hmm. A little bit of a different mindset going into the games knowing that little bit of fact. Yeah, to me it just adds an interesting dynamic and it makes it fun. You know, I'm not worried about them. I trust my team, and they've told me, we'll protect you, don't worry, just kick the ball. And so I just put my full faith in my team, and I'm not worried about it. And then just now, a couple questions here uh, to finish off. Um, in terms of the support that you've gotten, um, tell me about how important it has been. I know you say your family really tight-knit, how big they've been on this journey. I'm coming through and then to follow that up you say you coach at Mechanicsburg you say you have a coaching clinic as well so the people that you're teaching are completely different sport too what mm -hmm. has been their reaction finding out that you're playing pro football and what have they been telling you and things like that so everyone has been incredibly supportive and I actually have man a number of players more than I can count on one hand that are interested in kicking footballs now so now I might have to change my soccer clinics and I might have to add in some football clinics and teach the youth because I'm having some, some of my players are interested in it and I think that'd be fun. And they, they have potential, they're great kickers, so I think they'll be good. Has there been anything funny that like the Mechanicsburg team has told you like when they found out that you're playing football, like anything that kind of comes, sticks out to you that is just like, it's funny. <laughs> I've been getting the same reaction. Like, are you kidding me? You know what? Yeah, I can see that. Because <laughs> I've always been known for my shooting. And even the boys know that I coach. The boys I coach, like, I'm always shooting on our goalie. And they all know I can shoot. So it's like, wow, really? Oh, OK, I'm not surprised, which has been the majority of response I'm getting. But you know, it's, it's mixed. And then the family aspect. How, how big have they been in this journey for you? Man, I've had. I probably had about 15 or 16 of my family members last game and like 12 the game before and I'm sure I might have over 20 next game. They are so incredibly supportive of this and they've never been to a football game and they said they're loving it and they love this program and the team that Justin has built. 
and that these coaches have made. And they can see that it's, that it's a great place to be and they're enjoying watching football. Do they understand it yet? Or are they still kind of getting to learn the rules? How, 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 what's that part like? When the flags go out, the question marks go above their head. So, but other than that, I mean, they get what they see in NFL, but there's a lot of rules. And even me, myself, I'm still learning a lot of rules. But um, they're getting the hang of it. How'd you learn how to kick a football? Was it through watching videos? Was it just getting a feel for it? Was it, what was kind of your system in getting there? My system was, so the first day I went out to the field, I was with my older brother, Guy, the one who told me, hey, you should, you should try kicking. And the key thing for us was to get data. So we tried out a number of different walks and step backs and a, different, a number of different ways to follow through and to kick the ball. And we just logged all of the data. And we just said, all right, what works, what doesn't, what feels good, what doesn't, where are you landing when you walk back here? Where are you landing when you walk back here? And we tried to replicate and get the most consistent data and then go off of that. So we were very, very precise and particular with how we were training. And then once we found something that worked, it was rep, 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 rep. So it was just, it was learning on the fly. There was no, on the fly. There was no looking at videos of kickers in the NFL. There was no, it was There was just, that too. Was there? There was okay. that too, yeah. A ton okay. of studying, a ton of AFL, NAL, IFL, AIF, every indoor league I could find. I probably went through over 50 to 60 games just watching kickers, how they're doing, how they're kicking in certain situations, onside kicks, squibs. And then I knew, I mean, the day I started kicking, tryouts for the Stampede was a month later. So I had a month to get good enough for them to call me to tryouts or to call me to preseason. And then once I got that invite, I said, all right, now I have two and a half months to get ready for preseason. Got ready for preseason. Once I'm in preseason, all right, I got two weeks to get ready for my first game. And then now here we are, week three. What were the nerves like going into your first game? Was there, were you taking through the emotions behind that? Were you nervous? I wasn't nervous. No, I was just, I was embracing the moment. I was just happy to be there. You know, once I got out there, it's kind of like you black out. And there have been kicks that I've missed. And the reason I've missed those is because I thought, because I was thinking. Every shot I've made, every kick I've made was, it felt like I blacked out. It felt like I wasn't even thinking. I wasn't even, I was in my own world, just me in that upright in the, the ball. And then I guess last question for me, a message that you have for anyone out there that is trying to live that pro sports dream. Um, I think you might be the kind of the best person to ask this question because it's a journey that's not going to be straight. Um, it might not even be in the sport that you thought you were going to be professional in. But in terms of whether it's pro soccer, pro football, you early on in your professional career, what is the advice or message that you would have for young kids out there that are looking to do the same thing that, that you're trying to do? Sometimes you might not know how you're going to get there, but believe in yourself and keep your mind open to doors that are going to open and keep your eyes open. Sorry. Keep your eyes open and be ready for opportunities because you don't know how they're going to, going to, going to come and in what capacity. You don't know what doors are going to open, but you need to be ready to find them and then to go through them. But sometimes you might not know how you're gonna get there. You just gotta believe in yourself, trust the process, and train. You gotta outwork the other people that are out there. There's always someone better than you. You have to stay humble. And you've gotta work and outwork your opponents and believe in yourself. You cannot doubt yourself. It'll only hurt you. So know that only you can do it. Set your mind to it and you We'll do it. You can do it.